inflation is what did it to us, right? They deregulated, uh, you know, banking and, and the banksters were able to steal and they were able to cheat and they were able to, you know, take good mortgages and bad mortgages and slice them up like, uh, I always said it was like making coleslaw, right? Where you take the red cabbage and the green cabbage and maybe the red cabbage has E. coli and the green cabbage doesn't. Well, the red cabbage were the bad liar loan mortgages and the green cabbage was the good mortgages, but they were allowed to shred them all together in one giant bowl and give everybody E. coli. I mean, this is what deregulation does. So it, it, it's just an amazing situation we find ourselves in. And now the economy is trashed again. People are, you know, we have 28 million people, 28 million people that don't have enough food in the richest nation in the world, in the world. The most advanced na uh, nation in the world can't have an election. We just can't, we can't pull it off. We can't do it. It's amazing. So here's my question. Who won the uh, trade war? <laughs> Where's this health care bill? Where that, where, where? Because he said it would be cheap. Where's the infrastructure? Where's that? Every week was infrastructure week. Every week was infrastructure week. Man is a con man. A con man. He inherited a functioning, well-regulated economy. He redistributed the wealth to the very tippy top and walked away. Chris in New York. Okay. May I help you? Yeah. How may I direct your call? Hello. Hi there. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Good. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I've been on hold for so long. I didn't. I didn't know if I was ever going to get on. It's a talk show. Pardon me. It's a talk show. I talk. Yeah, no, I, I I understand. I understand that. Uh, I just I just thought you know I was listening to your your, your station. I listen to it almost every day, and uh, you know I think I think some things you're you're right. Some things that I, I don't agree with. You know, Donald Trump does have a flawed personality. Uh, you know, he's done some things. Uh, you know, in in New York State. I mean, I grew up in New York City, so I know some of the contractors he's burning on. Yeah, stuff. me too. Right, and and I also know you know I'm, look, I'm not a. Uh, uh, I, I'm more for freedom of choice. I'm not a pro-life for like you know some of the things he says. So some of the things he represents, so I'm not representing. But... What do you like about him? Because <laughs> I can feel it. No, well, I'm just. Uh, well, one thing is, I, I think that it, that he's being blamed for the coronavirus unjustifiably. Really? I mean, I think yes. Uh, he left it up to each governor of every state to manage the coronavirus. Uh, you know, the way they felt fit. He has no real federal power to mandate anything in every state. So what happened was each governor did something different. You know, governor in, in uh, Florida did something then different than the governor of New York and governor of New Jersey. So every governor uh, mandated what they how they wanted to handle the coronavirus differently, and in the end, they all failed. You know, people crossing the borders all the time and all that stuff. They they ended up all failing. The only the only thing that that the president really could do. The only power he has was shut the borders, which I totally agreed with. But I don't know why he was put down for doing that. By, by... He wasn't. He lied about that. Nobody put him down for doing that. Nobody. That was just one Okay, of well, you know, in, in Operation Warp Speed. I mean, well, look, he, he, I he mean, got, Pfizer, he, you know, he got a drug. I, I got to tell you, Pfizer invented uh, this vaccine that, you know, is being sticks, you know, tomorrow, England, UK, uh, they will start uh, vaccinating their people. Pfizer was not part of Warp Speed. Pfizer was uh, is a German company, and they created this uh, mRNA uh, vaccine. Uh, with they're not part of Warp Speed at all. Yeah, but BioNTech was. Um, they were given a two billion dollar no, order. No, yeah, an order to complete the vaccine. Right, they were the given an order, to... but they were part of Operation Warp Speed. So you know. And, well, and, the only and way let's to get... not forget this part, okay? This is the part that really irks me. When New York was really, really in the throes of it, and it happened there first because he didn't ban travel, okay? You have 44,000 people come in from China after his travel ban, number one. Number two, the strain that you guys had 
in my hometown, you know, I'm a New Yorker too, uh, was from Europe, and he didn't shut down European Correct. travel. All right, so that, that happened. And while that was happening, he literally set one governor upon another and made them go into a bidding war for PPE, for, for, for personal protection equipment, and Jared Kushner got on the stage and said, that stockpile that we have, that belongs to the feds. That's not for the states. The states have to go duke it out with each other. Never did anything on testing. Nothing. Okay? Did nothing at all. And lied about what he knew and is captured on tape by Bob Woodward, where he's telling Bob, Bob, you have no idea. This thing yeah, but, is right, airborne. Step back for one second. You said lied about what he knew. Yes. Okay? Do you really think that it was, that it was appropriate for him to panic? The American public can say, no, he didn't, lies, he didn't, we don't, more, on, Americans. Was it more appropriate for him to say, hey, calm you're a, down. You're a New it's Yorker. You're, Chris, you you're know. a New Yorker. We don't panic. Most people in this country don't panic, okay? We rise. The only thing we ever panic they over. They would if the president panicked. The over. only. So his well, only. I don't his, agree. I agree with only, the way he handled His it. only like, choice. His down. only choice was to go, we're all going to die. Or to actually step in and say, we're going to roll out a lot of test kits now. Everybody needs to be tested. While you're waiting for your results, you need to isolate. We want enough test kits. Yeah, why? We weren't prepared for it. The Thanks World for Health Organization offered Thanks us to... as many test kits as we could use. And Donald Trump said no, because tests cause cases. <laughs> At the very end, though, or there will be more. All things Randy at randyroads.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. This thing is a killer. If it gets you, if you're the wrong person, you don't have a chance. Yes, yes, exactly. Now, this, monster, report. this is a scourge, and who's the plague? And Anderson, that's just the beginning. I know tomorrow night you're going to have Bob Woodward on live with you for the whole hour. There will be more of that tape, and you're going to hear much more of Trump in his own words behind the scenes. In his own words behind this, Chris, I, I just have to say to you, uh, Obama could not have <laughs> had a test <laughs> for a novel coronavirus. That's ridiculous. I heard that at the very end. Uh, we were up against the break and I had to let you go, but uh, there is no way <laughs> that you could have a test for COVID-19. It's a novel, meaning a brand new coronavirus. Now, you know the common cold is a coronavirus. You know there are certain flus that are coronavirus. Uh, there is no way. But the world health, when our tests failed, and that's what happened, our tests failed. When our tests failed, the World Health Organization stepped in, and the World Health Organization said, we have tests. Donald Trump didn't want the tests because he understood that tests would produce cases. And he was very busy telling you that it was a hoax. He was very busy telling you uh, that it, was, it wasn't even real. And then he spent months, months promoting hydroxychloroquine. Take it, take it. And then he said UV lights. Then he said disinfectant. Okay, and he kept on denying. To, you had Larry Hogan, a Republican governor, who had to use connections that he has through his wife, who happens to be of South Korean descent, and she had relationships with South Korea's uh, politicians and was able to get to the president of South Korea and ask them to please, please help and send tests, and they did. You had uh, Governor Whitmer in Michigan requesting PPE, ordering it on her own because the federal government said the stockpiles they had were for them. It wasn't for the states. It was very, it was very scary. It was very sick and twisted. And uh, she had placed an order, and the order came... And Donald Trump had the U.S. Marshals go and steal it. Steal it from her. Oh, please. Give me a break. 
It wasn't to keep us from panicking. We don't panic. We're Americans. We have been attacked physically. We have had, uh, we've been bombed in Pearl Harbor. We had planes fly into the, our, our own city in New York on September 11th. We lost 3,000 people that day. Nobody panicked, okay? People had traumatic stress disorder because they were seeing people jumping out of buildings, and it was, it was stressful and traumatic and, and, and just a nightmare. But now we have almost 300,000 dead. We lose 3,000 a day. And you're going to defend it? I mean, think about if I would have defended Osama bin Laden. I mean, that's just crazy. That makes no sense at all. No sense at all. Now he goes out and he has super spreader events, okay? He goes out and uh, he still doesn't want testing. He still says testing is the reason why we have so many cases. But now you can see the deaths that resulted. First you get tested, then you get treated, then if you don't respond, you get hospitalized, and then you die. And we can see that that happened, and that's going to happen to another 250,000 people while we wait for a vaccine. And the vaccine, we don't know if the vaccine actually prevents transmission and we don't know how long the immunity is. I heard anywhere from 119 days, okay, which is what, four months, three months, four months. I'm so sorry. Uh, Chris, you're a New Yorker, you're a brother. But honestly, I got to say, this man totally didn't want the stock market to panic. That's when he was talking about panic. He was talking about the stock market. He thinks in his warped mind that the stock market is the economy. GDP is the economy, okay? GDP, gross domestic product. And if we don't get a stimulus package out of these Republicans in the freaking Senate, we're going to see GDP shrink by a trillion dollars in the next year. A trillion dollars in the next year. And in the following year, in 2022, it'll shrink again by another 500 billion. Look, these Republicans, you, 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 gotta, you gotta wake up and realize that they're not in it for you. They never were in it for you. They're in it for themselves. They do insider trading, they make money off it. How did Mitch McConnell become so freaking rich? Give me a break. This man is an impediment to Americans, to our recovery, to our health, to our safety, to our understanding of democracy, to our understanding of the law. Uh, it, it, I'm so sorry. I'm just so sorry. But, you know, I'm on one side. Ours. America's. I care about us. I care about America. I care about law. I care about people following the law. I care about accountability when they don't. Otherwise, we don't have a democracy. That's what I care about. Now, you cannot have a president who is a congenital liar. You cannot have a president who alleges fraud when he loses, okay? And even preemptively. He did it in 2016, too. You know, eh, the whole thing's rigged. It's all rigged. rigged, rigged. I, got, I got mashups of him saying rigged in 2016 thousands of times, literally. And then when he won... No problem. Now he lost. Problem. You got his henchmen, his dirty... How Rudy is, is not disbarred, I have no earthly idea. But that's got to happen. People have got to be held accountable for, for, for dividing us down the crack like this in the middle of a mass casualty event, a humanitarian crisis of epic proportions. And yes, it's because he failed to act. It did not have to be this way. Tests could have gone out the door. Everybody could have been told no super spreader events. He could have called the governors together. He could have uh, done lots of stuff on interstate commerce for Pete's sake. Interstate commerce, you know what that is? That is a federal law, okay? It's constitutionally permitted to regulate interstate commerce. And you know what? You know how I learned about interstate <clears throat> commerce? Because it's really quite confusing. So let's make it nice and simple. Put a put a this pen, okay? This this flare, bottle of ketchup. I don't care, whatever you want. The plastic is made somewhere, and the ink is made somewhere, and the the putting together is made. So 
ketchup is easier. The tomatoes are grown somewhere, then the tomatoes are processed somewhere, then the tomatoes are put into a bottle, and the bottle is made somewhere, and the label is made somewhere else. And then it's uh, put in a cardboard box that's made at some other paper fat. And then it's put on a truck and it's shipped over state lines. That's interstate commerce. See, if this president wanted to do something about COVID, he certainly could have. This idea that you just throw up your hands and you go, oh, there's nothing he could have done under federal law. Bull crap. That you're buying it in the face of all of this suffering and misery and pain and loss? For a New Yorker, that's kind of stunning. Clear for takeoff. Randy Rhodes Air Force. Air Force. Call in, connect. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. The CDC director says the next three months will be, in his words, the most difficult time in the public health history of this nation. So here's the question, uh, Senator. Where is the president's leadership? He's obsessed with everything else, not with this. Well, this hasn't been the focus of his rhetoric, apparently, and uh, I think it's a great human tragedy, without question. The extraordinary loss of life is, uh, is heartbreaking and, in some respects, unnecessary. Not in all respects, but we've relaxed our standards as individuals. Uh, some states haven't had mask mandates. And from Washington, we have not had a constant, uh, consistent plan and plea for people to wear masks, to social distance, to take all the measures that would reduce the spread of this disease. It's, uh, it's unfortunate that this became a political issue. Yeah. It's not political. This is public health. Right. And unfortunately, we have not made that message clear enough to the American people, and people are dying because of it. Yeah, the country's never been in worse shape uh, since this pandemic erupted in January and February, early March. Uh, but there are still, as you well know, uh, Senator, Republican governors are resisting basic health and safety measures, as you just described them. Your state of Utah only enacted a mask mandate last month oh, after God. hospitals became overwhelmed. Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida says people in Florida, he actually says this, are happier oh, without God. safety measures. Is this type of attitude costing thousands and thousands of American lives? Well, no question that it, unless you take this very, very seriously and communicate that this is not a political matter, this is not a matter of liberty, this is a matter of safety and public health. And, and we have people who are very, very sick, many people in the hospital. We have people who have died and are dying. It's unacceptable. We needed to have a far clearer message from the very beginning that this was serious, that we should take every step we possibly could in order to... Uh, constrain this virus is spread and we haven't done that and we're suffering the consequences even today yes and that's because of lack of leadership as he said at the beginning it's because of lack of presidential leadership it's because of the politicization of mask wearing it's because of lunatic fringy people like christy gnome uh, it's because of utah not doing mask mandates it's because of all these states all these states refusing to tell their people because the president told their republican governors that covid was to be billed to the people as a hoax because he didn't want a hit on the economy. He, t he just wasn't willing to do it. He just, and now look at it, look at it. It's a humanitarian crisis with a massive hit on the economy because it had to be. The people who had some brain in their head about economics or about health or about public safety or about humanitarian crises told him, until and unless you get COVID under control, the economy cannot uh, function. It can't. It won't. It couldn't possibly. People are, A, too afraid to go to indoor dining. People that aren't going to indoor dining or bars, for God's sake, are going to spread it to people who are doing everything right. You need some unified message. And we never got one. And now we have a humanitarian crisis. We have states that are broke. We have 28 million people who are broke have no food, can't pay their heating bills in the middle of December, right ahead of Christmas. And you've got the 10 million people that are still collecting, able to collect some unemployment benefit, uh, about to lose it the day after Christmas. The day after Christmas. Lack of leadership. You know, 
Interstate commerce is totally, totally regulated by Congress. And if Donald Trump, he's got, he had, he had everything he needed, <clears throat> everything he needed to create some sort of a unified national response. He didn't want it. He didn't want to recognize that it was real. He didn't want tests because he didn't want the numbers to go up. He didn't want people to know that they had COVID. He said it would magically go away. How many times did he tell you it would go away? He said Easter, we would all be together in church and everybody would, Easter, that was April. It's December and the numbers are off the rails. Sorry, can't uh, can't defend uh, you know his his response to this. I, I I I Chris, you got on you got on my nerves. Uh, you know why? Because you're a New Yorker, and I, I I always thought we knew better. I always thought we understood that when we're attacked by either a superstorm or a foreign adversary or a biological humanitarian crisis a natural disaster in another form that we would all rally around each other. I really believe that because that's what I lived through. But this man has been so able to bamboozle so many Americans to their utter death, really, that they have decided that they would die for him. That is fringy. And dangerous. Uh, Diane in California. Hey, Randy. Um, I have two words. Stimulus package. I call it humanitarian relief. It's, I'm in California, and I'm in Santa Monica, and it, it's just crazy. I mean, all these restaurants just take out. You walk down. I live by the promenade. It's, 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 it's desolate. And we're a big tourist town, you know. And I know, it, you know, it, 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 not here because we have Governor Ron Death sentence who refuses to do anything at all to, you know, ameliorate uh, COVID. N nothing. I mean, and when it's time, you know, the the plan for the vaccine is only uh, they only have stage one A where they're very sure that the CDC is going to. Well, the CDC has recommended. It doesn't mean that anybody's got to follow this. That uh, you know, frontline healthcare workers and senior sent, or, you know, senior living, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, you know, get the vaccine. You know, after that, there's no plan at all about who goes next or what. But what's really disgusting is without this stimulus, there's no money for the states to distribute mm -hmm. the vaccine, which, just like Chris said, well, there's really not much that the federal government can do, so they're going to drop ship a certain number of vaccines to states, and then states are going to have to figure out how to administer it. And it, 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 and it costs money. It, 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 it costs money to do it. it. Of course it does. And people don't know. People don't recognize the effect that it has on the economy, not just, you know, like, you know. Oh, I think they do. I think they do, but I, I don't think they connect it as COVID is causing the economy to suffer. They think the economy is suffering, so F COVID. That's where the thinking gets garbled, right? But I just want yeah. everybody to remember that it was Donald Trump who went down to Puerto Rico after their natural disaster, Hurricane Maria, and threw paper uh -huh. towels at them. Well, that's what he's doing to us now. He's throwing paper towels <laughs> at us. Exactly. It's just Tragedy. It is a tragedy. It's a humanitarian crisis. It truly is. And we need humanitarian relief. The states are broke. The states are absolutely broke. So how are they going to be able to administer these vaccines whenever we get them? You know, every state's going to get a whole lot less than they need to begin with, right? And they're all going to have to figure out who goes first. But how do they do it with no money to do it? Clear for takeoff. Randy Rhodes Air Force. Air Force. Randy Rhodes. 273844. We're in a crisis. We need to come together as a nation. We need the Congress to act and act now. If Congress and President Trump fail to act by the end of December, 
12 million Americans will lose their unemployment benefits they rely on. Merry Christmas. Yeah. The unemployment benefits allowing them to keep food on the table, to keep the lights on and the heat on, pay their bills. Emergency paid leave will end. The moratorium on evictions will expire. States will lose the vital tools they need to pay for COVID testing and public health. Put yourselves in that position, anybody listening. Laying awake at night wondering what's going to happen tomorrow. <clears throat> it's going to be harder for states to keep children and educators safe in schools, to try to provide assistance to keep small businesses alive. States and cities are already facing large, large budget shortfalls this year. Yeah. Again, through no fault of their own. They've already laid off more than a million workers, even more teachers, firefighters, cops, will lose their jobs unless federal government steps up now. And all of this weakens our ability to control the virus if we don't step up now. So that's leadership. Are you panicking? He says we're in a crisis. You panicked? No. People don't panic. They want leadership. They want to know what to do. They want to see their states funded. They want to see their states be able to not to fund the police, which is what is happening because states are broke, both red and blue. They are broke. Whatever fiscal problems they had before the pandemic have gotten worse. Lower tax revenue because of Donald Trump's redistribution of wealth and higher demand for public services at the exact same time. That is a recipe for disaster. And so you're seeing a million public sector workers be laid off. And you're going to see millions more. You want to see the police defunded? Follow the Republicans right down that road. Because defunding the states is defunding the police. Defunding the cities is defunding the police. And for that matter, firefighters and teachers and emergency uh, medical techs and public servants like the people who sweep the street. You want to add cholera to COVID? Lay off the sanitation workers. I mean, this is so bizarre. And the president of the United States currently is throwing paper towels at you. And for those of you who are okay with it because they were brown people in a commonwealth not really recognized as being oh so American, just know that because you didn't do anything then, he's now doing it to you and there's no one to speak out for you. If you don't speak out, when he throws paper towels at this group, then he throws paper towels at that group, and then that group, and then there's no one left. No one left. We are in a humanitarian crisis, and we need to limit the damage, both human damage, economic damage, damages to small business, deteriorating skills of workers, children falling behind in school, the whole shebang, all because he failed to lead. As we battle COVID-19, we have to make sure the businesses and workers have the tools, the resources, and the guidance and the health and safety standards to keep businesses and schools open safely. It can be done. Because here's the deal. The fight against COVID won't be won by January, in January alone. To truly end this crisis, Congress is going to need to fund more testing, as well as a more equitable and free distribution of the vaccine. We're going to need more economic relief to bridge through 2021 yeah. until this pandemic and economic crisis are over. And then we need to build back better. And I have to tell you, we're the outlier in the world. Other countries, they have, uh, you know, they, they, they flatten their curve and then there's a spike and they close down again, but they pay their people. They pay their people to stay home. They pay their people family leave money or they pay their people unemployment benefits. We don't do that here. We don't do that. And this is what you get when there's no leadership. And this is what you get when the states are allowed to go broke. And this is what you get when you have a president who is obsessed with himself and nothing else.
who lies and lies and lies some more, who will tell Bob Woodward, oh, it's a killer, Bob. He really just gets the wrong person. I always wanted to downplay. I want to downplay. I didn't want test cause cases, test cause cases. And people were repeating that to me, and that was really twisted. Uh, Ginger in California. Hey, Randy. Love you long time. Me too, you. <laughs> yeah, I work for the VA. Might as well just say it out there. Uh, uh, hey, chat room. Yeah, I've been busy. Sorry. Um, but uh, we had a, um, a blog come through from the medical center director today, and I went and watched it. And we've been getting surveyed, like, daily about the vaccine. So what I did not know, and I sent you the link, I don't know if you're going to be able to watch it or not, but I sent you the blog link and the information. The vaccine is actually done in two two doses. Yeah. So they're 21 days apart, right. and you're not, once you get the first shot, you're not covered um, until after, I think it's, he said seven to ten days after the second shot. So he said there's like a good four or five weeks in there where you're still susceptible to covid Right. While you're That's in right. between the two shots. That's right. And then, so if we have, tw- right. and if, if we had uh, 40 million doses, that's enough for 20 million people because each person. Exactly. Per- okay. And so I want people to understand that. And, you know, that also the um, chairman of Pfizer said he isn't completely sure that once you're double, you know, once you've got both shots, he's still not sure if you can or cannot transmit COVID to somebody else. Yeah, exactly. The other concern is the storage. I know there's been a lot to do about the, the special handling, the storage. The reason why we're getting surveyed to death at the medical center is because once they open the vial, they have to use it all because of storage issues. You can't just like put it in the refrigerator and use it later. No, you have I know. to use it all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's so right. there's a lot of cost involved here and a lot of stuff that's going to happen. Don't expect to get your jab and be going out about your merry way and be back to normal. Well, happen. that's why that's why we need a bridge, a bridge, uh, you know, of, of money. That's that's where we are. That's what we need. And Mitch McConnell is an impediment to living on this planet because he's got his. So screw you is basically the whole Republican idea. Pull yourself up from your bootstraps. Well, what if you have no feet? What if you have no boots? And by the way, have you ever tried to pull yourself up from your bootstraps? It can't be done. It just can't be done. I don't even know uh, where that came from. And I'm sure somebody does in this audience, and they will tell me. (laughs) I once said I never understood a look a gift horse in the mouth. And, of course, they sent me the old English, uh, you know, story of the gift horse. I I don't. You know what? You can't pull yourself up from your bootstraps. That's just a fact. And if you can't breathe, you really can't. All right, so tomorrow, I just want you to know... Uh, they're having a super spreader rally. They're going to be in, in, in Valdosta, Georgia. Okay, Biden and uh, uh, Obama are also supposed to be going to Georgia tomorrow uh, because our future, literally, will be impeded by Mitch McConnell's Republican Senate unless we can get the two seats that we need, the Ossoff seat and the Warnock seat. Unless we can get those two seats, we are going to stay in a humanitarian crisis. We are going to watch the police get laid off. We're going to watch the, the firefighters get laid off, the EMTs get laid off. We're going to watch the sanitation workers be laid off, teachers, etc. because they don't care about us. They'll throw paper towels at you. And that is why this these two seats in freaking Georgia matter so much. It determines the majority in the Senate. And so everybody's going to Georgia tomorrow. Now, on Sunday night at 7 o'clock, there was a debate between the richest woman in the Senate, Kelly Loeffler, who nobody ever voted for, ever, not once, not ever, for dog catcher, let alone senator. She was appointed by the man that they want beheaded, basically, Brian Kemp. She was appointed by him to take Johnny Isaacson's seat, right? And so now she needs to run. She's running against the pastor, Raphael Warnock, from the Ebenezer Baptist Church, Martin Luther King's church. And she's calling him a Marxist and a spy and a communist, just like they did to MLK. That's her whole campaign. 
So Sunday night, they'll meet for a debate. It will be aired on CNN. It's early. It'll be at 7 o'clock on uh, Sunday night. Ossoff cannot debate David Perdue because David Perdue will not show up for a debate. Because he's a chicken. Perdue chicken. Have a good weekend. Clear for takeoff.